Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new campaign series here today on the channel. We're back on Third Age Total War for Medieval 2. We're playing on the Divide and Conquer submod. We're playing on version 4.5. We're going to be starting a brand new campaign as the Dominion of Isengard here today. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new with notifications on, leave it on the comments feedback and suggestions for the series and where you like me to expand and conquer. We're going to be doing a short campaign. What I really want to focus on this series is to bring down Rohan and Gondor. So we're going to be doing daily videos of this Isengard campaign. I'm really keen and excited to be back on Third Age. It's that time of year for me. It's in December. It's in the Australian summer. And I just have a lot of nostalgia for playing Third Age. I do do a couple campaigns throughout the year, but for some reason, summer and Third Age Total War just uh, goes together hand in hand. I don't know. It's just, maybe it's just me. But I want to do more Third Age on the channel uh, throughout the summer. So I'm thinking maybe playing as the Easterlings, or maybe we should play as like a good elf faction. I'm not entirely sure. I think I just get a lot of nostalgia because in the summer in Australia it would have been my time off. I would have had time off in high school. I just remember playing like the original Third Age without sub mods like so much and just watching like classic old school like <laughs> Let's Players like Surreal and, and, and Diplex Heated and that. But uh, I'm really keen for this one. So we're going to be playing as Isengard. I'll go through the campaign and strategy after I play the intro. Okay guys, welcome to the campaign map. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so we're playing on Divide and Conquer 4.5. I'd love to play version 5. I need to contact uh, the developer that makes this because I'm always interested in doing um, sort of early access campaigns for third age, but I've just never got around to it. Okay, so we've got the Dominion of Isengard here, uh, a simple ring. And the recruitment report as well. Diplomacy. Here are the wars currently going on. So we start off with, I think, the only faction with one territory. We start off with Isengard. So we are currently at war with the Independent Realms. So that's the Rebels. We currently have an alliance with the Dunlings. So for this series, series we want to bring down Rohan and the Horse Lords. Once we've done with that, we'll push down into Gondor. And if you want to see more episodes after that sort of short victory conditions, we can do more. Or we might be better off to move on to something else. So let's go through what we're working with. I love starting with one province, so we can really sort of build up from the ground up and forge a huge empire. We're going to have the rise of Isengard here today. So let's have a look at what we're working with. So recruitment-wise... Orc Spear Guard. The thing is with Isengard, they have a lot... They don't have many Tier 1 trash units. They've got a really good roster early on, uh, which is a lot of fun. So I want to look at Sardamun's unit as well for it. So if he's still got crossbows, they are still incredibly awesome. Yeah, here we go. So the Guard of the Hand. This is arguably one of the best crossbow units in DAC, and it's always a lot of fun. And let's have a look at my general units. So we've got Lurts down here with four units. What does he have access to? Berserkers. Now, apparently these have been nerfed recently, but they're still very potent. And I'm assuming Ugluk as well. 
uh, has berserkers as well. Okay, sweet. So I think what we'll f first focus on is trying to take as much rebel territory down here as we can. I'm sure Rohan will declare war upon us at some point. They really do despise us. So maybe pushing into Eisen Run here, so we'll be able to fight some ethnic Rohirrim men of Rohan, even though we're not uh, directly at war with them. Uh, Airwise as well, we can have a look at that, so the Dark Lord hasn't come in. We don't, Oh yes, we don't actually have an air thing, although Lurtz is our heir, he is our first captain, I think it's just based on whoever is the sort of, who has the strongest command and who is sort of the most renowned orc, so hopefully we don't lose Saruman at some point. He's 19 years of age, apparently, which is alright. Uh, we can talk about the One Ring as well, because we want to try and get that at some point. Uh, with Isengard, has a, they've got a unique script from what I can remember. It's been quite a while since I've played as Isengard, but if we do get access to the One Ring, we will be able to keep it for ourselves and challenge uh, Sauron's rule, and then eventually I believe we get all the Nazgul's under our control, although we do get attacked by all the known world, so... We'll have the Nazgul's, if that's something we should get. So, should I keep the ring, or should I give it back to Sauron? I don't think anything really happens too much if we get it back to him, apart from we don't get those um, buffs and whatnot. We do get access to um, various Nazgul units as well. Uh, we can have a quick look at the building chain. So, what have we got access to in Isengard? An advanced blacksmith. Okay, so we probably want to get those eventually. That'll be really good for us. It's kind of similar to the uh, Numenorean plate that we got in uh, the Gondor series. Okay, let's quickly dive into some construction before uh, we dive into our military. So we've got a warg breeder here, a ballista maker, a leather tanner, a building ground and a boar breeder. I think going for the boar breeder is the play to get the improved food production of 3% and the public growth of 0.5. Mines as well are always good. The Chieftain's Hall gives us access to Urukai bodyguard and the armor there as well. I think we can get a lumber camp at some point. Um, I remember in previous iterations of this mod and in Third Age that Ents spawn in and around Isengard, which can be a bit of a problem, but I think in the patch notes for this that I read, it has been removed in version 4.5. So we've got a Urukai infantry here, uh, just archers and some raiders there. So we'll keep one unit in Isengard just in case it gets attacked. We'll move Saruman the White out. We do have access to mercenaries as Isengard. The thing is with Isengard, they have some of like the most enjoyable infantry in the game. They look fantastic, of course. We don't have uh, heavy cavalry at all, or access to maybe war riders, I think we probably have access to, but the only way we're probably going to get cavalry is from our neighboring um, Dunling allies. So we actually can get some goblin infantry here to help us out, so we'll do that. We'll push into this rebel territory now, that doesn't change anything. So in the Foldberg, we have Gimling. We could knock him out pretty early on, one of... Theoden's renowned generals, but I think staying neutral with Rohan is probably the play for now. We do have Worm Tongue here, so we could potentially get some more, um, maybe military alliances and stuff. We'll see how we go. Okay, so we'll push Saruman to try and get into position. We'll try and rally him up with Lurtz. I think we want to try and get everyone in and. Ugg look can probably come down here as well. I think rallying up to try and take Eisen Run is probably the play. But no one seem, can, can seem to attack it in one turn. Do I want to try and risk it and try and take it in one turn? I just don't know what's in and around here. To be fair, they could attack us. So what we'll do, we'll march out here. So what are we looking at here? We go Assault. 81. So they only add numbers by about 40. So what's inside? They've got cell swords, a unit of peasant militia, one arch unit, and bandits. Okay, I feel confident to play this one with our orcmen, bane guard, our spear guard, Lurts, and of course the raiders and archers there. 
So we'll probably fight this one here. We'll just sit here for now. We'll bring... Or oh, he might be able to come in. No, I think he's one tile reserved. We'll move Sardelman down. I think he's one tile away. Okay, and recruitment-wise as well. It's going to take quite a long time yeah, to get those in. So what should we prioritize? So we can get Dunling Horseman here. I think going with the Spear Guard, Cavalry, Crossbows, and we'll go like that. We just we just need to constantly keep on pumping out units. Okay. So, did that other army come into range? No, it can't. We could go with the Night Attack, but we're not. Lurtz is a... What? Four... A 10 star commander. Alright, let's fight this one on the field of battle here today against the Rohirrim bandits. Oh my god. A dwarf. Bang smack in my face. <laughs> Is that from. Oh, it's from that RTS game. That I can't remember the name off of the top of my head. Maybe I should play that because there's been a lot of mods for that. Okay. So, quite an open settlement. Now, I'm curious to see how well our units and our archers will perform against theirs. So, there's one, two, three, four ways into the city, and we'll probably surround them in all adequate ways. So, we can't deploy there, but we can deploy here with Lurts. We'll deploy you here. We want to try and skirmish as many of them out as we can before we even push into the small town or hamlet, whatever you want to call this. And we'll try and get those guys to go fully this way. Alright, sweet. Archers wise, I think we'll probably swing them around this way because there's more ways in. Alright, let's start, pause, and have a quick look at the units that we're working with. So here is Lurtz and his Berserker unit. Moving on to the Spear Guard now. How awesome do these guys look? <laughs> with the white hand face masks, okay. And here we have a bit more of a beefier unit. The Bane Guard. I was born in the darkness. <laughs> oh god. I don't know guys, I think that movie was trash if I'm being honest. Yurikai Raiders, that third one, I really couldn't stand. Alright, and then we've got our archers here as well. Okay, so let's have a look at them. So they're just clustering, we want to try and neutralize their archers. But toe to toe. Rohirrim Rebels. It's going to be an interesting one. Okay, so let's move you guys up. Let's potentially move you into a slightly more advanced position. And... Yeah, so that's that way. So we'll move you guys here. Move you there. And we'll continue to move this way slightly. So we'll move up our Yurukai Archers. But let me know in the comments, guys. Feedback and suggestions for the series. Will you allow me to expand and conquer? Tips and tricks from you DAC connoisseurs. I try my best, but... The thing is with so many mods, like, it's, it's like you can't know everything. Particularly as a YouTuber that plays a lot of variety Total War games. Like, they're so different from the amount of experimental mods I play on. 1100 AD, 1212 AD, Divide and Conquer. <laughs> You've also got the likes of Divide et Impera. So, but I know a lot of you guys sometimes stick to one game of the other. So, we've killed 3% and haven't lost any of theirs. So, we're currently trading with their archers. I would imagine, stats-wise, we probably have the difference on them. Okay, so we just need to continue to be in a close position. Um, actually, you guys are probably getting clipped slightly. 
Uh, you guys should be most definitely... Oh, there, look, oh, what's going on here? Okay, they're moving their heavies out. Are they running away? Flee! Flee for your lives! No, they're just coming out. To posture. So we should be able to get rid of these archers soon. Yeah, quickly now. Yeah, they were stopping a flank coming in. Two mit, uh... Yeah, I don't know if we'd win that, so now they're pulling back. If I charged in, it's a bit of a bait, because those sellsword units are there. Okay, now give chase further around the back. You swing here. Looking at the casualties sustained and inflicted so far, we're doing well. Yeah, so they tried to come out there, but then they, they pulled back. Let's slightly speed things up, so go here. And I guess technically you can sit here. You don't need to be all the way around there. We're still currently just trying to whittle down as best as we can. But I am open to do more Third Age on the channel. Maybe playing as Rune. I don't actually know when version 5 is coming out. So if I get a hand on or access to that, we could do maybe some campaigns on version 5. Okay. So, I think we can probably stop hitting those. Oh, they're still clustering a little bit there. I think maybe trying to hit those heavies is probably the play now, because that's what's going to take most of our casualties. So, we've got an option. Do we try and completely eradicate the archers and allow them to hit us with impunity, or do we switch up our targets and try and go for the heavies to reduce the... their hit points, try and soften them up. Continue to fire off into there. Another classic Third Age YouTuber they used to watch back in the day. That I forgot to mention as well. Sapphire Phoenix. We should have given him a shout out. He was definitely one of them as well. Okay, we'll, can, we'll speed things up slightly because... They're not really doing too much. We're nearly out of ammunition, so we're going to have to push in. But they're forming up a defensive position. Now they've clustered up. Okay, so I'll reform you here. And we'll make our way to go in. Alright, are you ready, men? Let's go! Right, that's my walk impression, which is terrible. Push here. You there, and around the back as well. We've managed to knock out 31% of them. Which is a good start. The thing is, with Urukai archers, we can even swing them in if we, if we really need to. They can definitely handle themselves in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But early on, the Isengard roster is a lot of fun. We don't have access to too many terrible units. So you can push in there. Lurts can go right through the thick of, thick of it. Leave none alive. Begin the second siege of Rohan. And if we can get those to swing those around there. So we've got Yurik Tide as an ability to come help us out. Swing that around the back. Let's use it now that we're in range. And Lurtz and his berserkers are running into the town. Sweet. So, if I could somehow get those guys around, that would be ideal. We'll get those... Raiders to go around the back. They're shaking slightly. But I think focusing on rebel territory is the play, first of all. Because we don't want the Dunlings to take our rightful 
Boldberg territory. You can continue up this way. Lurtz is getting stuck into the thick of it as well. If it reduces a bit, we might pull him out because the last thing I want is Lurtz to get knocked off. <laughs> that would be typical. Allow Ugluk to take the command. It's gone to 40... 50% now. We've only lost 4% of ours. Our Yurukai are holding quite well. Yeah, it's those heavy... Oh! <laughs> I see like a dead orc there and I'm giving a... Get a heart attack. Enemy general fallen. Captain Harden, Hardang of the Independent Realms. So even with the death of their general holding this, they still haven't capitulated, which is interesting. Uh, must be the difficulty. Yeah, even a zero-star commander they seem to be holding out for. Okay, I don't want to lose Lurtz. <laughs> That'd be such a meme if we lose him in this first episode. So pull him back. Get out of there, Lurtz. Or is he too or is he stuck in? Yeah, they're actually like quite literally going berserk. Come on, get out of there, Lurtz. No! Why? Because meat's back on the menu! <laughs> yeah, there we go. Now he's running out of there. Cheeky Lurtz. Might pull back there. They're still holding well. And our casualties have rose and risen up to 11%. They're now 72. They're fighting us to the bitter end here. Man, I'd love to see an officially licensed Third Age. On the scale of Warhammer. I surely can't be the only one. That's like that. There was that CA documentary which really hyped it up and got it spinning. That <laughs> uh, Someone from officially from CA was like, Yeah, we're not un unopposed to doing licenses. <laughs> With the Warhammer. We've shown that we can do it. So, if the Tolkien estate is down, we're down. <laughs> To be fair, Game of Thrones on that level as well. Especially with Game of Thrones, there's been so many just absolutely terrible Game of Thrones games. Like, unbelievable. Just like the mobile versions as well. I think the that there was that Xbox RPG. I don't think that was arguably too bad. Oh, that Telltale game was fun until, like, <laughs> Telltale, like, basically collapsed. And ran, ran out of money. I'm still waiting to finish my save on that. Who's fighting towards the end here? These cell swords. Bring Lurtz back into it. Oh, there seems to be a couple of them in, in and around there. So we'll bring you further back for morale support. But we've completely surrounded them here. They are really just holding out. Making us really fight for this one. Probably can speed things up. Victory is inevitable for Isengard. It's only a matter of time. We've initiated the countdown now. And this is our first settlement for the rise of the Dominion of Isengard. The Bloody Butcher begins. Against the independent realms. And that should be the last of them as well. 25% it rose to in the end. There seems to be a unit there we can't get access to. Maybe just trying to knock him off his feet is the play. Hey, clear victory. So Lurtz deployed 808, losing 169. The captain deployed 842. So we lost... 21% even though we numerically were outnumbered. Looking at the casualties sustained and inflicted, the Berserkers got 28. The Archers 76. Oh, so maybe I shouldn't have ran in the Archers. 
I thought they could hold their own a lot more. Maybe that's previously in more third age thinking than Dak, so I'll take that uh, piece of advice there, food for thought. So, casualties inflicted. 304. That's, that's so well. Particularly skirmishing them out. 112. The Bane Guard did 236. Oh, the Spear Guard didn't do overly that well. Really, even being more heavily armoured. Yeah. I guess that's the difference between Spear and essentially an Axe unit there. Anyway, we'll continue on. It was Sauron who made them sinister. And instruments of domination and deceit. The Palantir. I do have access to my own Palantir, which I can use. But I haven't done too much research on it. From what I can remember, there's always a cost and effect for using Palantir. And from what I can remember, my thinking on it was that it spawns stacks and units that I don't particularly want to fight. And it only gives you line of sight through various things. Have they changed the Palantir in 4.5? Maybe. Okay, so Eisen Run is now Eisen Mine. <laughs> so I guess we'll just occupy it straight up. And Burning Post, Captain Lurtz gets that. So we'll rally up here in Eisen Run. And I think we're ready to end our first term. We'll chuck a quick save. And Dolamroth claims Edhelond. Okay. Moria reclaimed by the dwarfs. And a new mission. Take the rebel territory of Der Waith. And that's further south. That's probably our natural sort of expanding position now anyway. Okay. A rebel army's moved up. We can definitely deal with that. And our recruitment is being complete. And Arnos has been retaken. So we've had a little bit of casualties here, but nothing too crazy to write home about. We'll rally everyone up here in Eyes and Run. We'll control a merge. And we'll move to the river crossing. Uh, I should have left one unit there. Can uh, someone here come up and save my misplay? No. Yeah, we just have to fight this before I can move a army back. That's fine. We'll put some dirt paths in so we can move our way around Eisen Run. Our recruitment's still coming along. Um, what can we do with Worm Tongue here? We can negotiate with the Dunlings. So we don't have military. Sorry, map information with them, technically. Would they be interested in that? They demand 500 gold for two turns. Sure, let's get better relations with them. We'll, we'll take the 1,000. It also will make the, the campaign map slightly nicer. So we'll get some better relations with them. We might zoom in there because it's a little bit far out. Um, where should I go with Worm Tongue? The thing is with Isengard, we're naturally in a really defensible position because the... The goblins to the north don't really deal with this. There aren't too many treemen there now. The west, uh, we could get drawn into wars over here, but I think it's sort of eastward. So where should we put Grima Wormtongue? Should we try negotiate with Mordor? And various evil kingdoms to the east? Rune, Harad? I think we're better off going east than west, actually, if I'm being honest. Anyway, let's chuck another quick save. And we'll have to probably fight this battle. We'll move probably, hmm, the weakest unit, but it's an archer unit. I think we'll leave the goblins back there. And we'll reduce the taxes on them slightly. So in Dirtway, Dirtwaith, there's just shy of half a stack, and then there's one here in the open field. Okay, let's push, and yeah, let's fight this one as well. So we've got some Dunling Horsemen here, Clan, Axemen, Spearmen, some Archers as well. But this will be our first battle with Sahruman the White Wizard. 
alerts and ugg look and we've nearly got a full stack under our control let's fight this one because we're probably gonna have to play a siege at some point so this might be our first open field battle for the series and, and for quite some time the artwork as well they've sourced in the loading screens is fantastic I love Divide and Conquer it's such a good mod it took me a while to get over to it because I remember back in the day um, I used to play just a lot of vanilla third age but it was Moz, it was the massively overhauled sub mod which I probably played more of and that was always a pain but particularly now with this new version 4.5 the install was an absolute dream <laughs> they've simplified that nowadays uh, always it, downloading medieval mods can be a little bit of a pain just because everyone has their own way of doing it so let's start and pause let's have a look so Orkman Spear I've also got my um, sort of my medieval 2 UI set out I used to go with the vanilla version of it but I think this shows a lot more of the screen and, and shows a lot more of the units so let's have a look at Saruman now I remember he used to be able to shoot like basically a ballista fireball I don't think he does anymore just the voice of Saruman and then we've got Uruk Tide as well Okay, so we're in a defensive position. We are attacking them at the end of the day. However, we do have Archer Supremacy on them. So they might actually come out and attack us. We'll just have to see. So they're clustering there. Their cavalry is probably going to be the major problem for this fight. But they seem to be falling back. Hopefully they don't run away. Don't run away! Push up here, please. That's an Oblivion reference. Run away! If you don't get that. Alright. Let's get everyone to move up. Push up, men! A new power rises. Womp womp womp. We will have a war with Rohan, of course, but the longer we delay, the better it is for us. Depending if you play it smart, Isengard can be one of the easier factions you can play as. Because <laughs> Rohan just really, even though they have fantastic cavalry, the AI just can't contend with the power of Isengard's infantry. Like, really. It's just the AI. A human plague could, of course. Okay. So, we'll sit in our position. You know what? I might just get everyone to target against their cavalry. Like, push up, get the get the archers, just try and hit that. I reckon those guys cycle charging in and around is probably going to be the major problem. And we'll move our infantry up to compensate and cover them. Because the range on these guys aren't overly too crazy. Yeah, they're getting really close in here. We're getting clipped here, which is fine. So if you guys can move up here, that would be ideal. Yep, so come on guys, let's get a venomous volley off. Neutralize those horse men would be the play. They're only a light unit, and now they seem to be turning. Hold men. Okay, it looks like they're coming in, so we'll counter charge that. <laughs> ah! Panic! <laughs> okay, 57. Yeah, if they want to come up like this, we'll counter charge it. We have the generals up here as well. Okay, mm so they're now charging. That's good. But we've reduced nearly half of them. So you go for this. Let's make our play now. Counter charge that. You go for this. Get our archers to hit these units that are sitting further at the back. So our spear guard is engaging their axemen on this flank. Uh, they're actually infantry units. We 
Okay. Their cavalry has been depleted down to six, which is perfect. And we'll get these guys down and around here. Sardelman's crossbow units are going to massively help us in this series. So we need to pull them up. They're now retreating out of their position for whatever reason. Swing back around and stop them if you can. We're dealing with them fine. Just push up there to help. Our archers are arcing their shots over our infantry and are reducing a lot of units there. So get Saruman to hit that. Just get all these units to get damage. Right, get everyone running. It's turning into a little bit of an unorthodox fight, because they are now hurting us, which is annoying. I'm actually doing alright, trying to stretch us a bit here. Yeah, the problem is with Isengard is that we lack cavalry and we can't run down some units. These guys have got decent speed about them. But we'll eventually get access to warg units, which will be really handy. But we might have to get some mercenaries soon. 4% to 54. A clear cut victory. And a decent sort of show off of a little bit of a taste and a bit of a tease. What has to come? Okay. Continue to move up here where you can. They're still holding their position. And most of their army now is in a full retreat. The ones that are still hanging around continue to go in. Everyone else is running away. You can sometimes still hit them from this if you can get here. They still automatically shoot. Okay. Everyone's hitting this back unit now. Even Saruman's crossbow units. All that remains is one unit of clan hunter units. So, when we took Eisen Run, it was mostly Rohirrim rebels. This time around, they're probably more ethnically Dunling, which doesn't bother me. Okay, it's all human to me. <laughs> Clear victory. Saruman deploying 2,197. Uh, losing 106. The rebel captain. What? How do you say that? Haloth there, or Halot here, deployed a thousand and lost 772. Looking at the casualties sustained and inflicted, what are we working with? Archers 104. Spear guard did better this time around, but everyone else just did all right. Mostly the orc men managed to take the casualties in this one. No matter. A burning of a fleet here. Dolamrith, maybe? Or it could be some Numenor reference that I don't get. Enemy camp sacked. Good tidings. How men have found the enemy camp and claim everything of worth. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> we should be able to make some coin out of this victory. 
Okay, so you're still moving there. We'll control A merge again because we just want to continue on the initiative. And we'll push into Der Waith. Okay, so battering rams, ladders, and a siege tower. What can we get more in one turn? Battering ram, five siege tower, I would say is the play. You're moving back here. And actually, I'm going to do a quick save. I'm actually going to do a hard save as well. Because we've been playing for about 40 minutes here today so far. The last thing we want is a game crash or anything else to occur. Anyway, um, uh, good. We'll end the turn and continue. Okay, guys, welcome to the top of the turn. So, the spear guard, bane, and cavalry units have been recruited at Isengard. And we're still sieging in the mountain in Derwaith here. This better quality Uruk unit can move here. We'll allow the goblins to run the occupation. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Just like a bunch of goblins trying to do the taxation and... Hey, what's our tax policy? <laughs> this week? Eh, yeah, kill them all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so can we get any more? No, so that's good. We can't really do anything here as well. Because it needs to flip over to our culture, doesn't it? I could move someone back. Because I don't think there's a chance that we could lose the army. But yeah, let's send Ugluk back. Just in case this gets ambushed by Rohirrim or something. That's the last thing we need. But we'll be able to get these Dunling Horsemen in, which are massively going to help us out in open field battles. We can, like, if we had some of those last time around, it would have massively changed things up. Okay, so let's push into Derwaith here. And let's have a look at what we're coming up against. So Captain Okta has Privateer Axemen. Okay, they're going to be a little bit difficult because they're a heavy unit. Two units of Peasant Militia. Two units of archers and then some bandits as well. But this is our first proper siege with siege equipment. Eisen run, it, although it was a settlement battle, it was more or less just a um, an open field with some added stuff. Oh, here we go. Got the hobbits leaving to the undying land. Those who made them did not desire strength or dominion. Okay, this is all just about the rings. All right, let's start the deployment here. They changed the icons for this as well. Maybe. Okay. So, move you here with the battering ram. Um, does... Yeah, spearmen really need to be attached to that? No, we can put a sword unit there. And optimize it slightly. So, there, there. Uh, you can go here, there, and we've got one more, so probably further down the line here. A straight-on frontal assault is what I want to do. Archers will move everyone up, go with a loose formation. We'll match our archer front line with the corner of the towers. Perfect. And then we've got reinforcements or reserves here. Ready to push in once the gate goes down. And Saddleman can occupy the right flank. Okay. So we're going to be fighting a lot of rebels here today. Looks like we're going to fight Rohan in the next episode. We're going to be playing for an hour here today. And then I'm going to be doing daily episodes of this Isengard campaign. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. I hope you guys stick around. Let's now start the battle. Push, guys. Quickly swallow up the ground, brave Yurukai. Okay, let's go. Archers, take aim. Loose. Pick individual targets. Fire at will. So, our archers seem to be taking some of the arrow fire and archers fire on us, which is perfect. If they can focus our expendable archers away from the heavy infantry now pushing up, or medium infantry, or light. 
That'd be ideal. Yeah, some of these are technically light and mediums, but they do look very heavy and cool. So now some of their archers are hitting us here. They don't have all their military forces up on the walls, which probably should have been the play. Using their arrow towers to maximum effect. They've left a lot of them in the town square itself. But the Urukai ladders have made their way up onto the walls. Let's bring them down. Okay, so now that you guys are getting up there, pick a target and go. Pick a target and go, please. You, where there isn't a target, push to try and claim the town square. You have an option to go down, but I think coming up and helping to hit them is probably the play. Archers wise, you've probably done your work now. Push up and hit these guys that are sitting further back. That's what I want. We'll group them up there. But the Uruquai. Uruquai? I, I don't know what I was trying to say there. Uruquai, maybe. Iroquai? Iroquois, <laughs> I was trying to say. The Uruquai. And the white hand of Saruman has now made its way to the walls. Building captured gateway, perfect. So I like to see. Yeah, those peasant militia. Oh, and we lost it instantly as soon as we got it. Anyway, it's been destroyed, so swing in these guys that are sitting back here, please. Like, hit that. Okay. I always panic when I get one of those notifications. I always think a general's being sniped. <laughs> Maybe it's when, way back in the day, where <laughs> I was <laughs> really bad at Total War, and I always think like a general's gonna die. Just <laughs> leaving generals exposed constantly. I still remember like early days in my in playing Total War. I, just, I can never figure out public order. <laughs> and... Uh, used to annoy me so much. I think it was mostly like that Western Roman Empire campaign when I was a kid. Like, I was super young when Rome... Rome 1 came out. And I remember not knowing and comprehending that basically... <laughs> the Western Empire, you kind of have to give up ground in that campaign. East you probably can hold easier, but the West is always quite hard. Okay, looking at the percentage of kills, 12% for us, 35 for them. Sweet. Oh, we've actually managed to clear our way on the walls here. That's fantastic. So get you guys down. They've managed to stop our advance here quite well on the gateway. Let's diversify these shots. Yeah, no, uh, maybe here then. Because you don't want to be clustering on the one unit. Sometimes when there's like a group up, say there's one here, so one, two, three. Sometimes you're better off to go like... Um, evenly distribute the shots instead of like targeting one unit because there are still essentially miscasts, miss like shots that go all over the place even in medieval too so sometimes in that instance you're better off diversifying your shot at output okay you can go here um Yeah, okay, there we go. So it's the privateers. That's what we should be focusing on, actually. So they've actually flanked us around here. They can cause massive problems if we're not careful. So try and get everyone really... Everyone here... Focus on them, even the archers. Okay, these guys can probably... Can you get to the town square? Yeah, you can. Make your way to the count town square, because we might be able to initiate the countdown. It could actually take us a good five minutes before we even... Destroy their unit there. 
Fierce, Rohirrim and Urukai fighting, battling it out. Yeah, although we've been fighting Rebels, it's mostly been Rohirrim. So, been pro like, even if this was owned by them, there probably wouldn't be too much of a difference, units-wise, anyway, in their defense. 20 to 55 now. So, we've managed... Oh, so they're trying to... S they're broken, but they're coming out to meet us. Oh no, they're now broken as well. Good. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep up the pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we maybe have got them. <laughs> 62 to our 20. They're still holding us out quite well here, though. Yeah, they, they caught that unit just absolutely beelining it towards the town square. You cheeky boogers. Yeah, so they were wavering the heavy axes. We probably now can halt. I think arrow fire now is probably going to cause way more friendly fire than what it's worth. Hey, we've managed to get rid of the enemy captain. But so far now that we've experienced, it might actually be for naught. But now that they're still running, get into the town square. If you can. These guys are absolutely tanking it on the walls. Yeah, you guys need to be disabled to fire and will. You're still shooting, even though I... Gave out the stop attack order. Okay, so this is all the infantry inside. Now at 77%. 28. Mm, I could get you guys actually to hit that back unit. Because, like, arcing their shots this way up and over the walls might actually work. Some of them need to reform, but yeah, that's better. The gateway is still hitting this there, which is infuriating. Those crossbows are doing well. Can they do that now? Huh. I'm used to not seeing crossbows arc their shots so well. That's fantastic. Look at that! Perfect. Well, that should reduce them a bit. Yeah, they're copping it hell on. And they're routing. Oh, that's superb! I told you Saruman's crossbow units are, like, awesome. His general unit. Alright, how are we going over here now, actually? Only a couple more in. Hey, we've initiated the countdown. Perfect, mate. Perfect. Okay. Man, it only took like one volley for them to go. And we have victory. A clear victory. 2.2k we deployed. Lost 600. And they lost 1.3. So, we lost that. They killed 600 of ours. Arrow towers, man. Casualty to sustained and inflicted. The Bane Guard, the Raiders, and the Bane Guard, once again, were the MVPs. The Archers took the beating, but that's understandable. Hobbits. Guess this is... Loth... Lorien. Okay, Derwaith is now under Isengard occupation. So, population, gold. Yeah, it's not even a point of sacking these, are they? We're just better off straight occupying them. And mission successful. You have been rewarded with one unit of Dunling pikemen at your capital. That's cool. I don't think we have access in the recruitment pool to Dunling pikemen. Uh, maybe. Uh, against cavalry in a defensive position, that might be quite useful. Okay, sweet. So, we can't really do much else here, because we haven't got the cash money. You're fine to sit here. We'll bring those pikemen in, in here, and we'll do another quick save. We can actually put a watchtower here, with our Gluck, and it only costs 25 gold. Awesome. 
I'm really happy that they've done... Oh, if I move into this stock, there's rebels around here, isn't there? I was going to say, oh, I can just ping around and build um, really cheap watchtowers. Uh, no, because those forests, I would imagine, are filled with rebels. Okay, we'll end the turn. We'll do one more turn. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Turn four. Faction announcements. Some retinues have expanded. And we've got some more uh, units on the way as well. Okay, sweet. Well, unfortunately on that note, guys, I have to wrap up the video here. Thank you very much for watching the first episode of my Third Age Total War Medieval 2 Modded Divide and Conquered campaign as Isengard, as the Dominion of Isengard. Thank you very much for watching if you've made it all the way through putting the comments to mess with the other subscribers simsy loves urukai because <laughs> people are gonna be like what what is he talking about yeah so it lets me sort of know we're a viewer retention as well if you've made it all the way to this hour long end i thank you i really much appreciate it i want to do more third age on the channel like i said at the start of the video so depending on how well this video does um will ensure more content so Support it, and I'll do more Third Age campaigns. It is simple as that. So we've done quite well here today. We managed to take Eisen Run in a good battle. We had an open field battle, and we had a decent siege. Like, this is a perfect start. We're only t four turns in, but still a lot more exciting things to come on this Isengard campaign. Hopefully, we deal with Rohan in the next episode. But maybe they're... What, what's even the go with them? Are they, like, preoccupied with anyone? Where is... So Gondor's going to be dealing with so much crazy stuff. The Dunlings are at law... Oh, the Dunlings are at war with Bre Breland and Rohan. Yeah, it's not like they're bypassing our territory. It's probably only a matter of time. They really have an alliance with Dol Amroth and Lothlorien? Lothlorien makes sense, but Dol Amroth, really? Yeah. But anyway, we're currently neutral at the moment, which is perfect. But yeah, thanks guys, stay tuned for more daily Third Age and Total War content on the channel. Unfortunately guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video and feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the links. You can support me on Patreon if you want. Channel members are available. Use credit code SimpsyTotalWar on the Epic Games Store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks. We've got Twitter, Discord, merchandise, Facebook, Steam Group, Instagram, Twitch, and Google Plus links all in the description below as well. But above all, guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy. Much love from Australia. Goodbye.